Hey, so welcome to today's video. Um, today we're going to be talking about how to make a uh, package from scratch. Um, I'm just going to kind of show you some of the tricks of the trade here. Uh, what I would suggest is you don't actually use this method that I'm going to show you, uh, but instead there's this ops package um, from Run that you can use. And this is a much better way of creating packages um, because it automates a lot of this process. Uh, there's also this from package. So if somebody else had like, say they had a node project on repo.opcity that you want to clone but kind of tweak, that would be a great option to use. Um, but here, we're going to show you uh, kind of the manual process. And this is a manual process that I personally do quite a lot. This is the actual Git repository that I cloned. So you can see it's written in Go. Um, but if we kind of go to the other um, directory, so this is, this is the actual package template, if you will, that every package kind of needs and wants. Um, you can kind of see that I've already started it off with. Uh, the image proxy is the actual file in question. We have our package manifest. Let's look at that. Uh, so here we have the name, underscore, version, and then the name of where the actual uh, file is. The args, so in this case, we're just saying, hey, it's the program name, and then the version. Um, the readme, you, you want to stick stuff into the readme. I usually just grab the description from the GitHub, throw it in there, give it a name and a version, maybe some cut and paste instructions, because we render the markdown, um, and uh, that that's, gives you a lot out of the gate. Sometimes I'll throw in some notes on, like, if I had to patch something. Uh, now you can see, like, what's in the sysroot. So this is the actual file system that we're going to be creating whenever we create the package. We obviously have our certs. Um, and then, you know, I've went ahead and, you know, done this uh, make their p lib uh, x86. Um, do we actually have that created? Oh, sysroot lib x86. Uh, 64 Linux GNU. And so this is the part of the video that I actually want to show you. Um, and so uh, what goes in there? Well, everything you see listed here. <laughs> so this, uh, this particular library, or the program is linked to quite a few libraries. Um, if we just word count it, you can see there's like a hundred of them. Um, so like I said, the, the package from run is your savior. It does all the work for you, but I wanted to show you the manual way in this video on how to do that. So how would we go about doing this? Well, you know, we we got LDD, right? But if we kind of pass it a print uh, through awk of the third column, um, we get, if I can type at all, um, we get our list of those libraries that we want because, uh, you know, the, the first one is the relative location, then we have this hash rocket, and then we have the uh, actual real location. And so what we can do is we can keep on piping, and we'll say, hey, we just want our x86-64. Um, we'll just pipe this into xargs, say, hey, include everything there, and then um, copy um, copy it all, and then shove it into sys root lib x86, uh, like so. Right, and so now if you do this, uh, you know, run tree on it, you can see all of your libraries are there. And I'll show you one more little trick. Uh, so before I try to upload this, um, I usually just kind of uh, throw it in here, and then I uh, can run it locally as if I downloaded it. Um, and uh, this is a this is a very easy way of kind of ensuring that um, things kind of work as, as you might expect. I might be missing something here, oh, so it works. Um, so yeah, this is super, super easy, uh, and this is the trick to do it. Till next time, bye.